Germany Broadcasting, Germany Broadcasting, people of Britain, greetings from the Third Reich. This is the voice you have learned to fear. This is the voice of terror. Again, we bring you disaster, crushing, humiliating disaster. It is folly to stand against the mighty wrath of the Fuhrer. Do you need more testimony of his invincible might to bring you to your knees? Very well. Are you ready, operative number seven? This is the voice of terror. A secret airplane factory somewhere in England. Listen, the screams of the dying can still be heard. This is the voice of terror. Are you there, people of Britain, shivering in your cellars? Listen, Operative 41, the fuse is lighted. Oil to fuel your navy, to feed your tanks. There it goes up in smoke by the millions of gallons. This is the voice of terror. Do you still believe that there are secrets unknown to the Fuhrer? Listen. Tonight at 7.10, an important diplomat boarded a train at a little station outside Liverpool. Each split second is accounted for. The rails divide. The train hurtles through the air. The diplomat will make no report in London. This is the voice of terror. Englishman, do you still await your doom in your stupid, stuffy little clubs? It will come, I promise you. Operative 23, the time is now. We strike you on the high seas, as well as on the land. This is the voice of terror. Englishman, the Fuhrer strikes you now as he pleases. Water pours through your greatest dam, smashing everything before it, even as our invincible armies roll toward their objectives. Despite the effective work done by the Intelligence Inner Council, jailing fifth columnists and saboteurs, despite their efficiency in coordinating military strategy based on information of enemy movements, they seem unable to cope with the voice of terror. Already six military catastrophes have occurred. The unmitigated nerve of the press. Now they're attacking us. At last the fellow of the kingdom come. If only we could keep this insidious stuff off the air. I'm not sure that I agree with you. What purpose would that serve? Well, the people wouldn't have to listen to it. I've been talking to Crosby, the radio technician. If we want him jammed off the air, Crosby can do it. I've been working along other lines. I've asked Mr. Sherlock Holmes to come here. What? Sherlock Holmes? This isn't a case for a private detective. It's a matter of state. In this emergency, we should take advantage of everyone's peculiar gifts. Mr. Holmes is the most subtle and extraordinary private investigator of our time. Are you intimating that the Army and Navy intelligence plus Scott and the Yard are not equal to the occasion, Sir Evan? I'm sure they're equal to any occasion. They've done a marvelous job of lining up fifth columnists, saboteurs, and keeping us informed of the enemy's movements. But the voice of terror seems to have them stumped. Sherlock Holmes may have a new approach that will solve the problem. What's happened inside these walls has always been secret. We don't want any outsiders here. I'm positively and irrevocably opposed to calling in Sherlock Holmes. Perhaps you'll change your mind. I see nothing whatever to make me do so. Prentice is right. 
For ordinary criminal investigation, Holmes is excellent, but not for this. He's unorthodox and theatrical. I can tell you all about him. Uh, gentlemen, perhaps I can throw some light on the subject myself. Holmes, how are you? So good of you to come. Good afternoon, Sir Evan. Your card opened all doors. <laughs> oh, uh, blouser! <laughs> oh, you've put on a little weight since you left school. You don't look any younger yourself, Dimples. How are you? <laughs> Fine. Uh, come in, won't you? You know these gentlemen? I think so. How do you do? I haven't had that pleasure. Uh, may I introduce my friend and associate, Dr. Watson? How do you do? do? Uh, I'm afraid I've arrived at an embarrassing moment. Not at all. This gentleman here, Admiral Sir John Prentice. Admiral Prentice objects most strongly to my being called in. How could you possibly infer that? Uh, from the carpet. Carpet? The man who rises from his chair and digs his heels sternly into the carpet is violently opposed to something, and the Admiral, being quite distressed by the criticisms of the press, would be most apt to resent my intrusion. Well, you've just arrived from Simloaks. Yes, of course. I... How on earth did you know that? Oh, pardon my mentioning it, but uh, adhering to your left boot heel is a variety of clay known only in Simloaks. An amazing piece of deduction. Elementary, my dear Baron. Here's a broadcast of the Voice of Terror. Greetings from the Third Reich. Are you listening, stout fellows across the channel? Are you listening, you little body of incompetent men known as the Inner Council? Today, a new thrill, a new proof of the invincibility of the Fuhrer. Right now, a crack express train laden with British troops and nurses is speeding across England. In just one moment, it will leave the rails forever, crashing twisted metal, the cries of the dying. They can't. Now, they wouldn't dare. It's impossible. Anyone. They couldn't have got on. The men are laughing, joking. That one in the third car reads a letter from home. It is the last letter he will ever receive. The train is rounding a curve. Its whistle is screaming. Farewell, it is saying. Farewell. <laughs> you have just heard an exact reproduction of the way it sounds, the way it must actually be. The hearts of the German people bleed that innocent men and women have to be killed because your stupid war man... Uh, sure speaking. Have you any news hands. of the Liverpool Express? Time and time again offered in peace. But if your blundering war cabinet cannot see that England is already lost, then it is our sacred German duty to prove it to them over and over and over until they are on their knees, begging, pleading, groveling for the exquisite mercy of our Führer. Each night, the voice of terror will announce... Shut it off. Stop it! Of England, even as you listen, and you... I'm sorry. Do what you can, Holmes. This frightful thing has got to be stopped. His son was on that train. How did they find out about the truce? It was an absolute secret. Gentlemen, something must be done about this thing at once. Yes. First of all, then, the voice must not be blocked off the air. But he's a menace. All over the Empire, this horrible news is broadcast. Blown up out of all proportions. The world is beginning to believe it. Even our allies are counting England out. People are frightened, panicky. The British people are not so easily panicked. It's dangerous, I tell you, to let this thing go on. Dangerous, yes, Captain Shaw. But we must continue to listen. What for? So that we can keep on guessing who it is? His identity is not important. The important thing is the purpose behind this campaign of terror. Purpose, indeed. Isn't it enough that our most secret plans are known? Our ships are being destroyed, our trains wrecked? I'm convinced that these disasters are only a prelude, a smokescreen, to cover up a more diabolic plan. And I intend to find out what that plan is. This council and Scotland Yard will give you all the aid you require. Thank you. Gentlemen, my connection with this case must remain absolutely secret. You understand that, of course. I certainly. You will let the council know at all times just what you're doing. I shall give you such information as I think wise to disclose in the interests of safety both the public's and your own. The Inner Council has never shared its secrets with anyone. I demand that you keep us informed of your activities and progress. Come along, Watson. Mr. Holmes. I want to apologize for your rather lukewarm reception here. Well, thank you, Sir Evan. I'm used to the chilly atmosphere of high places. And of course, you recognize the importance of time. Quite, and results. Mr. Lloyd, I'm quite sure that Mr. Holmes can be trusted not to fail. He never has, you know. Thank you, Watson. The word is seldom. 
<laughs> Goodbye, Sir Evan. Goodbye, sir. Goodbye, Byron. Goodbye, Watson. Well, shall we walk for a bit or take a taxi? I'm afraid we have no choice. Huh? No, Watson. I have a feeling that when we go out of that door, a girl will be waiting. A girl? What do you mean? A young lady whom neither of us has ever seen before will come forward to greet us. Oh, now you're pulling my leg again. Mr. Holmes, I'm Jill Grandis. How do you do? This is my friend, Dr. Watson. How do you do? How do you do? I've been assigned to drive you around. Thank you. Good gracious me. Where do you wish to go? Baker Street. I know, 221B. Come on, Watson. Hurry up, old fellow. Holmes, the girl waiting. What an extraordinary thing. Elementary, my dear Watson. No, 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 it's an amazing deduction. How on earth did you arrive at it? Barham told me. Huh? Oh! oh don't you worry, Mrs. Hudson. Just giving her a bit of a clean. Now we're on a case again. The, the joints are a bit rusty, like mine, you know. Is he back in a case again? Case? The greatest case of his, of our career. Oh, mercy, it always is. <laughs> Holmes. I say, Holmes. Why? That's all right. Well, if you ask me, it's disgraceful. It opens first? Not at all. It's very good. It's Ronald Headless conducting very well tonight. I don't mean the concert. No? England's in danger. Heaven knows what frightful disaster's happening, and you sit there calmly listening to the wireless. Music has charms. Very restful. That's got nothing to do with the whole... country, my dear Watson, it may have a great deal to do with it. Oh, really? I don't see what? BBC at Quest Station, this is Sherlock Holmes. I understand you play recordings. Would you mind playing Beethoven's Fifth, conducted by Sir Ronald Headley? Thank you very much. But you just heard it. I like it. Huh? We've had a request for the Beethoven Fifth Symphony, played by the London Symphony Orchestra, under the direction of Sir Ronald Headley. This is a transcription. <laughs> I say, Holmes, I don't think... Mr. Holmes. Yes, Gavin? Christopher. Dead? Yes. It's been driven in with a lot of force. Watson, this is a warning. Warning? How do you know? I had sent for Gavin to get certain information, which you must have found there in the dark and sinister alleys of Limehouse. He came with his message, which someone doesn't want me to hear, someone determined and dangerous. What's the good of a warning of danger? You don't know from what or from whom? That we shall have to discover. This knife was thrown by the tip, from a distance of about 50 feet, by a man about five foot ten. 
Steady, Holmes. Elementary. No fingerprints. But the distance and the man's height. The angle of entry and the force with which he penetrated the victim. But Holmes, what do you suppose he meant when he said Christopher? We must find out at once. Come along, Watson. Huh? Come in. Oh, Mr. Holmes, I saw a fellow lurking about your steps tonight. Blimey, he won't lurk no more. Come on the yard. Take care of it, Dobson. Very good, sir. How did it happen? Haven't time now. Get your coat on, Watson. We're going out. No, 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 no. Holmes, you promised. Oh. Uh, where are we going? Limehouse. Why you let Miss Grandis go? This is no space for a girl or anyone else. It was seemed to the people about. Even Miss Grandis. If I'm not mistaken, she's keeping an eye on us. You're Mr. Sherlock Holmes, ain't you? Yes. I wouldn't come down here if I was you. This is Limehouse, and we don't fancy your sort of bloke in these parts. The fellow's absolutely right. Hadn't we better Quiet, be... Watson. This is still a free country. A man may walk where he pleases. And live to regret it. Live, yes. Regret it, I think not. Step back. Come on, Watson. Unfriendly, what? Speak of it. It's all right, quiet. I can't see a thing. Luckily for us, neither can they. Apparently, the enemy has found out that we joined forces with the government. What makes you think that? This knife, like the knife which killed Gavin, was thrown by a former obituary of the docks in Hamburg. It's a German knife. The knife throws of Hamburg are extremely expert. Mr. Holmes, can't we come back in the daytime? Certainly not. I don't think we're safe. No one in the world is safe now, Watson. Least of all us. Sherlock Holmes. I got a specially ugly lot here tonight. I'll take my chances. I can't keep you up, Mr. Holmes, but. Kitty, Gavin's sweetheart, his wife. Can you get her? It's urgent. Try. Holmes, I don't think I like this place much. Just sit here, if you don't mind. I think you'll recognize me, Mr. Holmes, if you look hard enough. Camberwell. You've got a long memory, like me. Tarleton murder, 1932. Of course, I sent you up. Mr. Holmes, don't, don't you think we'd better be... Stow your gab. For ten long years, I've been sitting down there in Dartmoor, 
For the old ten years, one thing's been preying on me mind. Only one? Just one. Someday I'll be getting out of here, I kept saying to myself. And when I do, someday I'm going to come face to face with Mr. Sherlock Holmes. Now you are. And now I am. Just who was it told you it was me who slipped the throat of that swine Tarleton? I want an answer. You told me. Me? On the windowsill, you left four infinitesimal pieces of ash from a particularly revolting kind of tobacco that you were known to use. A knife blade was sharpened by a left-handed man. You signed your name to the crime. So that's what? Exactly. Very careless. Careless? It's criminal, I calls it. I ought to be shot. Perhaps someday you will be. You can put your revolver away now, Watson. Hmm. Well, Holmes, you, you never know. Where's Gavin? Sit down, Kitty. Where is he? You've got him into trouble. What have you done to him? Take it easy, Kitty. Gavin's dead. Dead? Oh, it ain't possible. Well, I was with him only two hours ago. You're trying to frighten me. No, I'm not, Kitty. It's you. You killed him. I warned him to stay away from you. I knew you'd do him in. I had nothing to do with it, Kitty. Well, who did then? Who did? He was knifed on my doorstep. I'm sorry. I'm deeply in his debt. Before he died, he said one word. Christopher. You know what it means? I've got to know. What's that to me? You want to avenge Gavin's death, don't you? I don't want nothing to do with it. No with you. I never had any dealings with the police, and I won't start now. I'm not asking this for myself. Our country, England, is at stake. Gavin was killed not by his own enemies, not even mine, but by the enemies of England. So that's it? Yes, Kitty. The Nazis killed him. Help me to find out what Christopher means, and I promise the man who murdered Gavin shall pay for it. Think, Kitty. The cutthroats of the world menace us all. You can help stop this savagery. Yes, you, Kitty. It would take the police weeks, months perhaps, to find out a certain piece of information we must have. That's not so with you and your friends. You know every nook and corner of London. Get them to help us. We need their help. Your friends will become an army. Do you understand? Secret, invisible and mighty. And you will be at their head, Kitty. You will be their leader. Grimes, do you know what Christopher means? <sighs> Dugan, do you know? Dugan, listen to me. I ain't got no time to listen to you, girlie. But you gotta listen. Someone killed Gavin. I don't know who, but you gotta help me find out. Oh. All right, don't help me then. Cut your own throats, that's what you're doing. Help me or help the Nazis? Sure, the Nazis killed Gavin. They might be your friends protecting them the way you are. Don't you know that all the crimes they commit are being blamed on you? Well, they are, and I hope you hang for them. You can have them. As for me, I'm British, and I'm proud of it. Nobody's going to call me a Nazi and get away with it. Well, help me then. Tell me what Christopher means. Well, don't anybody know? It's got to mean something. Well, speak up if you know what it is. Let's have it. Don't mean a thing to me. You're going to creep in the corners all your life. Are you going to sneak away at the very sight of a man like this and show him what coward you are? What are you afraid of? 
I'm not asking this for myself. England's at stake. You're England as much as anyone else's. Got no time to think about whose side we're on. There's only one side, England. No matter how high or how low we are. You, you, you and you. We're all on the same team. We've all got the same goal. Victory! Now, yes. what do you want to know? Spread out all over London. But find out what Christopher means. We'll find out. No fear about that. Thank you, Kitty. Well done, my dear. You're sure speaking? Uh, yes, Miss Granders. That checks with my report. Uh, no, Miss Granders. Sir Evan hasn't arrived yet. Yes, thank you. Miss Granders reports that Holmes spent some time at the Air Ministry today. That checks with my information. Last night, a murder and a session in Limehouse. I wonder what the fellow... He's here now. I don't think I need to report on my activities, gentlemen. You must be fairly well informed. We have our methods, Holmes. It only remains for you to show what's been accomplished. All in good time, Mr. Lloyd. Good evening, gentlemen. Good evening, Sir Evan. What's the matter? You look pale. Oh, it's nothing. I... Baron, your hand. Let's have a look at it, Baron. Oh, it's really nothing. Just an accident. What sort of an accident? Some fellow took a shot at me, just as I was leaving the house. Took a shot at you? It's only a scratch. Ugly thing to happen. Have you any idea who it was? No, I haven't. He popped up out of the bushes just as I was getting into my car. Fired once, then disappeared. What do you make of it, Watson? Bullet wound. Congratulations. <laughs> this is a matter for the police. Oh, no, no, please. I can never identify him. Let's forget it. Captain Shaw. People of Britain, greetings. Is it shock you need? Very well. We Nazis can produce them till Britain's proud head is in the dust where it belongs. People of London, look out of your windows. You will see your promised disaster written across the skies. Uh, Lawford, turn up the lights, please. Look to the East India docks. Are you alert, number 20? Look, Britain, look and wonder and despair. We Nazis keep our promises. There's a terrible fire in the East End. Concentration of men and supplies. American bombers, tanks, gone. Destroyed utterly. The flames are mounting. Higher and higher and higher. Now the glare must be visible even to the short-sighted leaders of your bewildered government. Mark well the towering fires. They consume your new planes from America. Your meager store of tanks. Your puny munitions. And your food. Planes that were your only defense against our all-powerful Luftwaffe. Tanks and munitions that you prayed would hold against the magnificent 50-ton German land monsters, which will soon be crashing through your very houses. Food. Desperate Turn it needed off. morsels you c This is really a terrible setback. How do they find out our secrets? It's horrible, the way it's timed, the precision of it. It's not so precise. Almost precise. What do you mean? I should call it exact. No. The fires actually broke out some time before the voice called to his operative in London. Joe, that's true. And last time, the train disaster. Captain Shaw was on the telephone immediately. And Scotland Yard knew all about it. The derailment must have occurred at least ten minutes earlier. That's certainly possible. Even so. What of it? No mystery, nothing supernatural, just split-second planning, that's all. Days, perhaps weeks in advance. Very well figured out, Holmes. It gets us a step forward. Now, gentlemen, let's take a step even further. I have charted here the tonal differences between actual and transcribed broadcasts. Using this test, I'm convinced that the voice of terror is undoubtedly recorded and played from a record. What does that prove? It proves that the voice of terror, the man himself, is not in Germany. He's here, in England. Oh, that's impossible. What are you telling us, Holmes? They can't be. Our technicians insist the broadcasts originate in Zeisberg. And so they do, from recordings flown to Zeisberg. It's impossible, Holmes. You can't expect anyone to believe that. It can't be done. Thanks to the Royal Air Force, I have some rather curious information. At irregular intervals, six Nazi bombing planes come over 
and drop their deadly cargoes on non-military objectives. A meadow or a sheepfold. That's nonsense. The Nazis aren't fools. They don't waste ammunition. Of course not. Then what's the purpose? To divert attention from the fact that a single plane breaks formation each time and disappears. But why? Gentlemen, that lone plane picks up plans, maps, secret military information, and the voice of terror's timed and recorded speech and flies them to Germany. I can hardly believe it. Sensational, if true. It's incredible. Fantastic. Mr. Holmes. Yes? There's a person outside asking... A lady? Um... Ask her to come in. Excuse me, gentlemen. Gentlemen, I must leave at once. Where are you going? That must remain a secret, even from this council. I object to this, Mr. Holmes. You're here against my wishes. Since you are here, I demand to know what's being done. As I've already told you, Mr. Lloyd, I shall report to this council at the proper time. And so, gentlemen, until we meet again, as I hope we will, take no unnecessary risks. We're all in grave danger. Come along, Watson. Coming. Stick. Good evening, gentlemen. I knew your curiosity would be your undoing, Mr. Holmes. You were expecting me then? Yes. I had hoped that the entire council might have come. It would have been a pleasure to deal with all of them, quietly and effectively. Eventually, they all will be taken care of. However, Mr. Lloyd is quite a catch and will have to suffice for the moment. What do you intend to do with us?
Were it not that time is so pressing, we might first put you on trial. On trial for what? Crimes against the Third Reich. Misguided efforts to wreck our inevitable victory. Mr. Lloyd, your super British patriotism, your blundering but sometimes effective intelligence efforts are well known. We have quite a score against you, which will be settled. Dr. Watson, a fair physician, no doubt, but of no consequence. To our stupid British minds, every life is of consequence. A quaint notion of an even quainter nation. We are not like that. We know that only the powerful are worthy of respect. Let our record speak for us. Your record speaks. It's brilliant. Thank you. A brilliant record of rapacity, cruelty, torture, deceit, and murder. Murder? <laughs> Gesundheit. Thank you. Cold? It is a little chilly in here. I'm sorry you're uncomfortable. My discomfort is of no consequence. Your false courage is not impressive, Mr. Holmes. Of course you realize that you and your friends are going to die. As all men must, sooner or later. Not later. Now. <laughs> Myself severely. I should think you might, Holmes. If you hadn't been so stupidly mysterious, allowed Scotland Yard to give you adequate protection, the man would never have escaped. No, he never would. Most regrettable. But. <laughs> Goes on tight. Was it, eh? Quite a haul. It's mine.
Go ahead. Your friends, the police, are undoubtedly still out there. There isn't a better hideout in all London. This will quiet your nerves. Tea's got cold again. We've been playing that thing all the afternoon. Fiddling while Rome burns. <laughs> Hello, what's this? General J. Lawford, KCB, DSO, and Captain Roland Shaw, MC, who today narrowly escaped being struck by a falling wall in a bombed area. Lawford and Shaw by a falling... Holmes, you don't think that... It was not an accident. Good heavens. Holmes, that sinister-looking fellow, what, what's his name? Mead. If only he hadn't got away. Yes, difficult as it was, I managed to let him escape. You let him escape, but great Scott, man. He was about to kill us. He may even yet. I don't understand you, Holmes. It's my theory that this chap Mead is the arch-criminal, that he's behind the whole thing. You're absolutely right, Watson, <laughs> except for one thing. Well, I'm wrong. Have you observed that a highly secret military plan is thwarted by each of these disasters? Yes, I have. Now that you mention it. Watson, there's a leak. A leak? You mean in the council? But, Holmes, that's impossible. Anything is possible until proved otherwise. You see who are in the council? Lawford and Shaw? They're about suspicion. Their record proves that. Anyhow, they were attacked. Unsuccessfully. Was Prentice? Would he kill his own son? Doesn't seem likely. And yet the boy is dead. Byron, of course, brought you into the case. So it's quite obvious that he wants it solved. Most patriotic of Sir Byron. He's a great fellow. Played wing three quarter for the school my last term, so I can vouch for him. Besides, he was attacked too. Shot at. So I gather. How about Lloyd? No, it can't be him. Mead was going to kill him as well as us. By the way, he's a brave fellow, Lloyd. Did you notice that he didn't turn a hair? Very composed. Come in. Mr. Holmes? Yes, Kitty? I think now we'll be able to get some information from Mr. Mead. Your plan worked like a charm. I knew you could do it. Oh, it's not so hard once your mind's made up. And mine is. You'll be careful. She better be. She's mixed up with that fella. Oh, I'll be careful, all right. But I'm going through with this. Good girl. I heard him talking on the phone today. Yes? He said, I'll take care of that little Seven Oaks matter at 11 tonight. Seven Oaks? Isn't that where... Barn has a country place. Watson, there's not a moment to lose. If I find out that Mead did kill Gavin, I'll... If so, he'll be punished. I warned you no one was safe with that fellow at large. Now he's off to Barham. Yes, I only hope we're in time. Come along, Kitty. I'll get you a taxi. Thank you, Mr. Holmes. You think you ought to go to alone, sir? Worrying about that escaped German agent, huh? The threat was to kill the entire council, sir. Calm, Smithson. Took bigger chances than this in the trenches. You've forgotten. I know, sir, but we were younger then. And there were no such thing as Nazis. I'm ready for him. I understand, sir. Driven to Evan down here before, of course, Miss Grandis. Quite often. He comes down whenever he can. He's a local air aid warden, you know. <laughs> Likes to get away from the excitement occasionally, eh? Yes. It's so very quiet here. Quiet and remote. 
away from everyone. Yes? Oh, Miss Jill. It's all right, Smithson. Where's Sir Evan? On his rounds, Miss. Which way? Down that lane of trees, sir. I'll go. You stay here. You too, Watson. Holmes, what on earth are you doing out here? I, uh, I've been worried about you. Yes? That fellow Mead appears to be in the neighborhood. Do you mind if I go along with you? I feel better about it. Not at all. I'd appreciate the company. You know, it gets quite lonesome, especially on a night like this. By the way, do you feel you're getting any nearer a solution of this terrible business? Yes, yes, the end is in sight. Really? Well, would you mind telling me? Listen. Air raid sirens. Yeah. Coming our way. Yes. Well, I don't seem to hear any planes. Wait a minute. I can. Look. There's one. She's coming right over. There's Holmes. He's coming in for a landing. The swine. That's a pickup plane. The voice must be here close by. Then we've got him. Madam, be careful. I can't understand you, Holmes. Why didn't you help me? We almost had him. You're too impatient, Baron. My patience is exhausted. This has got to stop. Thought you'd have solved the whole thing long before this. What happened? Was that a Nazi plane? Yes, I saw the filthy swastika myself. Great Scott. Took a shot at him, but he got away. And Mead also got away. Well, I better go and report this. You'll go with you. Come along, Watson. You needn't bother. I can take care of myself. My dear fellow, there's no use taking chances. I'm afraid you're a marked man as long as Mead is at large. Come on. You're a fine one leaving me alone half the night. You think I like it? I want to go out and have some fun. Don't bother me. Said you were going to let me work with you. Someday you'll come back and I won't be here. Where would you go? What's my business? Maybe you'll be waiting here next time and I won't come back. Don't talk like that. I'm sorry, Kitty. You seem... Sort of different lately. Anything the matter? Maybe the next time you see me, I'll be in a position of authority, of power. No longer hiding in the dark. Giving the orders, not taking them. What do you say to that? You're drunk. Drunk? Yes. When I was a boy, I dreamed a dream. I was dressed in armor. Shining blue-gray armor. I rode on a horse through the streets where the people cheered, hailing me. I rode over the bodies of underlings prostrated before me. Their blood ran out along the gutters like a river. What if this was no dream? What if it was prophecy? What if all this comes to pass? Well, something must have happened to you. Yes, Kitty. Something that you're going to share with me. Get your coat. Hurry.
Right, you. Got plenty of petrol? No. Start driving. He'll be here, I'm sure. It's starting now. Mm. Here he is. You're almost late. I had to go to Downing Street. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Your favorite broadcaster, the voice of terror, coming to you from Zeisburg. Tonight, I have something special for you. Where are you weakest, you weakening people of Britain? Consider well. Is it lack of food? Is it your stodgy leadership? Faulty ammunition? Scarcity of shipping? Lack of raw materials? Do you know that despite all your great efforts, your coasts are inadequately defended? Especially one coast. And there we shall strike. Swiftly. Terribly. Tomorrow at sunrise. In a special broadcast at that time, I shall describe the carnage. Turn it off. What does he mean? What kind of threat is this? Remember, all our reports for the last few weeks have indicated abnormal enemy activity on the coast of Norway. Mm, that means an attack in force on our northeast coast. Then that's where we must concentrate all our forces. Immediately. Mm. They'll never bring it off now that we know. This time the voice is boasting. Perhaps, but so far he's made good his boasts. What have you done to stop it? Shilly shallying about while these crimes continue? This is the last straw. We must prevent this all-out attack at any cost. Sir Evan's right. All our available resources must be rushed to meet it. Withdraw material from elsewhere? If need be, yes. This calls for action and lots of it. There's something curious about this broadcast. He said tomorrow. Always before it was now. I wonder what it means. There's no time for wonder at this point. Mr. Holmes, your methods have got us nowhere. The situation demanded action and got none. Mr. Lloyd, I think I know when action should be taken. Nevertheless, we take charge now. This is a crisis you can't hope to deal with. A man to see you, Mr. Bring Holmes. Bring him in. Yes, sir. Mr. Holmes, sir. Last night I trailed Kitty and the fellow Mead. Yes? They went to a place near a bomb village on the coast, sir. North? No, sir. South. South? Why didn't you come sooner? Motor trouble, sir. Just got back. All right, it can't be helped. Stand by until we need you. What? So, it's on the southern coast the drama's to be played. The fox is out of his hole at last. Mead has led us to the voice of terror. Gentlemen, we must set out at once. Are you mad? What sort of a wild goose chase are you suggesting? It's ridiculous. It's time to put a stop to this. Barham speaking. Yes, of course. We've been ordered to accompany Mr. Holmes. Harrison. Mr. Sherlock Holmes. Good evening, sir. All the arrangements have been made. Splendid. And that church up there? Yes, sir. All right. Let's go, gentlemen. seems to be delayed. You'll be here, never fear. You all understand your objectives. Sheila. Sheila! Yes, sir. You understand what you are to do? 
Yes, sir. I'm going with the first contingent to Liverpool. Your men are waiting there, organized to take control? They have been ready and waiting for weeks. What was that? When the world is changing, it is natural to be on edge. Merely owls or perhaps wood rats. No, it sounded like Sheila. Yes, sir. Wall. City of Croydon and Croydon Airport. All is prepared. You go. Birmingham. Where I used to slave in the factories, but not anymore. The day has come at last. Line them up over there. Mr. Holmes, oh, I was afraid you'd be too late. I'm glad you're safe, Kitty. Come along, sit down. Gentlemen, when Mr. Mead and I last met, he wished he could put us on trial. Mr. Lloyd, Dr. Watson and myself. Now, Mead, you are on trial. First, let me tell you why you have met here. The vague but canny threat against our northeastern coast was a blind. Your group was congregated here to receive an invasion army proceeding across the channel. What? Invasion? All here? those men rushed for defense of the north? Oh, I can't believe this. Sit down for a moment. It seems absurd to me. Well, I mean, no. At the head of this mighty force, the picked and chosen. The faithful were to proceed to various centers of our country and take up positions of authority. And we shall. Do you understand that? Unfortunately for you, that is not to be. We are held, yes. But the invasion will proceed without us. What else is he doing? I protest Why are we helpless here? Please be patient. You called me in on this case to identify and to silence the voice of terror and to circumvent the unknown plan behind it. That undertaking is still in progress. But we are rapidly drawing to a conclusion. Gentlemen, the voice of terror is here with you in this church. What? Are you referring to Mead? Why, who is it? Mead was my one sure connection with the voice of terror. At the warehouse, I allowed him to escape and assigned Kitty here to trail him. When I learned through Kitty's abduction that Mead had come down here to meet with a group of men, I asked myself why. Why a deserted fishing village on the channel when Scotland was to be the next scene of disaster? And why was it necessary to withdraw great stores of ordnance and material for the protection of Scotland? It was a ruse, gentlemen, to leave this coast unprotected. A ruse devised by the voice of terror. I, uh, I knew quite early, of course, that the voice was a member of your august body. You dare to insinuate that one of us... If this is meant to be humor, it's very ill time. German agents knew I was on the case the very night I was called in. How did they know this secret? One of your counsel informed them. There were attempts made on the lives of all of us. But the attempt made on the life of one of your members was entirely unsubstantiated, resting on his word alone. One member whom I went to the country ostensibly to protect, actually to surprise. This member fired on the Nazi pickup plane, not in rage as he pretended, but to warn and frighten it away. That was very clever of you, Sir Evan. Sir Evan? I can't believe it. Sir Evan couldn't be implicated in a thing like this. What's Sir Evan got to say? Let me congratulate you, Mr. Holmes. You admit this outrageous accusation? There's been treason before, but this is beyond belief. Treason is not involved. Sir Evan Barham is not Sir Evan Barham. What are you talking about? In March 1918, Lieutenant Evan Barham was a prisoner in a German prison camp. There, his amazing resemblance to a certain Heinrich von Bock, a brilliant young member of the German Secret Service, sealed young Barham's fate. One morning, he was taken out and shot, murdered in cold blood. Then this man is... Is Heinrich von Bock who has been masquerading in Barham's place for the past 24 years. You see, gentlemen, the Germans plan well in advance. It's incredible. How could a thing like this happen? Barham had no immediate family. The details of his private life were avidly studied by von Bork, who was three years at Oxford and had a perfect knowledge of the English language and English habits. So, with possibly the help of a little plastic surgery, 
Not forgetting the considerable resemblance to Barham in the first place, the deception was carried through. Very clever, Mr. Holmes. I must say, Holmes, this is positively amazing. What made you first suspect Barham? The real servant Barham carried a scar from childhood. Uh, this one is about 20 years old. A detail, but significant. I can't believe it. It was Barham who insisted on your being brought into the case. A colossal piece of egocentric conceit. One to match your own, Mr. Sherlock Holmes. Of course I brought you into the case. To see your weak and silly handling, to watch you fumble and lose it. Are you too stupid to realize that this group is but a small part of our organization? We have men stationed all over England, ready to take command. They never will. They were all taken exactly at dawn, just as you were. So now we are trapped, huh? No, gentlemen. It is you who are trapped. Listen. Even now, our message mists are roaring overhead. The vanguard of the invasion. Why are they not routed? Where are our boasted anti-aircraft guns? They are silent. Our little ruse was entirely successful. The coast has been stripped of its defenses. Preserve your vaunted British vanity as best you may in this your hour of most humiliating defeat. You have not captured us, my friend. We have annihilated you. Do you really think us so blind that we would strip this coast of defenses because of a voice on a phonograph record? The Council was deliberately misinformed about moving the defense forces. You are trying to save your face. Look, if you think I'm lying. Those are not Messer Schmitz. They're Spitfires and Hurricanes. Returning from blasting your invasion forces, destroying men and barges by the thousand. Look further, Von Bock. Look below. Commandos, tanks, slipping away now that your invasion force has been destroyed to bring ruin and terror to your people. I wonder if there's anything on the wireless about this. The BBC. We are frightfully sorry to announce that a special broadcast of the Voice of Terror will have to be delayed indefinitely. A threat against our northern coasts, made only as a blind to cover the enemy's invasion plans, has not been fulfilled. Instead, our victorious planes have blasted invasion bases on the continent, destroying enormous stores of materiel and troops. More news of this triumphant victory tomorrow. At the same time, the scattered Nazi agents all over the Commonwealth have been unceremoniously clapped into prison. That is all. This girl merits our deepest gratitude. Our country is honored in having had such loyalty and devotion. We'll remember. Holmes? I don't know how we'll ever thank you. Don't try, it isn't necessary. I'll be with you in a minute, Holmes. I'll just see that she's taken care of. I always did think that chap was an imposter. Barham was a good fellow, played wing three quarter for the school. Lovely morning, Holmes. There's an east wind coming, Watson. No, I don't think so. Looks like another warm day. Good old Watson. A one fixed point in a changing age. There's an east wind coming all the same. Such a wind has never blew on England yet. It will be cold and bitter, Watson. And a good many of us may wither before its blast. But it's God's own wind nonetheless. And a greener, better, stronger land will lie in the sunshine when the storm is cleared. <laughs> 